Howdy folks, Steampunk Desperado here. From time to time, I like to celebrate historical events. As I'm filming this, the upcoming event is May 24th, Victoria Day. It is the 204th birthday of Queen Victoria. Yes, that celebrated monarch who gave us the Victorian age, and often a fictional component of steampunk. <laughs> She's one of those real-life historical characters that appears probably most often, with the possible exception of Nikola Tesla. So we see a lot of portrayals of her, sometimes positive, sometimes a little negative, depending upon the author's bent, but it's always interesting. She was a fascinating character. And the reason she was so important, I think, is because she ruled England during the period when it was the most powerful empire the world had ever seen. So, for quite some time, her birthday was a holiday in much of the British Commonwealth. As far as I'm aware, I think Canada is the only country that still celebrates it. But in any case, you know, people still remember her fondly. And I wanted to take this as an occasion to say something good about Great Britain. Because not only is it the setting for so much of our steampunk fiction, but it's also our American heritage. So much of it came from Great Britain our legal tradition, our language, and our Bill of Rights, which was inspired by the Magna Carta. And this makes me think about a passage from Shakespeare, a play called Richard II. And a lot of people quote this. You'll see a lot of clips of this on the internet, famous Shakespearean actors reciting this, because it is very beautiful. It's very poetic and about how unique England is and was at the time, and still is. And often they don't go through the whole thing because the whole thing ends on a pessimistic note. So very often they'll leave that out. But I think it's important to have the context of what was happening here. As the scene begins, John of Gaunt, he was the Duke of Lancaster, and he's an important character in this play. He's speaking to his friend, the Duke of York, who, about how much he loves this land and how it's going wrong and how he hopes that his impending death, because he's quite ill, and he knows he's not going to live long, he hopes that his impending death will shake up the king and get him to think. Um, but the Duke of York says, no, unfortunately I think he is surrounded by flatterers, and that they will just keep telling him to do what he's doing. And so that kind of sets Gaunt off. That's, that's when he goes into the speech about what is great about England and what he fears will come to pass. It's interesting because it's eerily prescient because it seems to me and it seems to a lot of people that England is in trouble right now. They've got some economic problems and they're stemming from a lot of events. We all know them, so I'm not going to go over them. And they are having a lot of social unrest. There's a lot of dissatisfaction with policies like massive immigration. And when ordinary Englishmen talk about it, they often get called racists. And it seems so unfair and so unjust, especially in the land that gave us the idea of free speech. It's a very, very appropriate speech for England of the 21st century. Now, in the Richard II, Act 2, Scene 1, as it opens, Gaunt is telling York what I just said about how he hopes his impending death will shake up the king. And... When York tells him no, he doesn't think so, that's when Gaunt starts his famous speech. And this is how it begins. This royal throne of kings, this sceptered isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi-paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself, against infection and the hand of war, this happy breed of men, this little world, this precious stone set in the silver sea, which serves it in the office of a wall or as a moat defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands, this blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England, this nurse, this teeming womb of royal kings, feared by their breed and famous by their birth, renowned for their deeds as far from home, for Christian service and true chivalry, as is the sepulchre in stubborn jewelry, 
of the world's ransom, Blessed Mary's Son. This land of such dear souls, this dear, dear land, dear for her reputation throughout the world, is now leased out, I die pronouncing it, like to a tenement or pelting farm. England bound in with its triumphant sea, whose rocky shore beats back the envious siege of watery Neptune, is now bound in with shame, with inky blots and rotten parchment bonds, that England, that was wont to conquer others, hath made a shameful conquest of itself. Ah, would the scandal vanish with my life, how happy then were my ensuing death. Now at this point, the king and queen arrive, and so Gaunt's speech stops, but you know, there's some heated discussion that goes on. Historically speaking, Richard II was a very controversial king, and he had a lot of opponents, and eventually he was forced to abdicate, and he spent his last days as a prisoner in the Tower of London. <laughs> so his story didn't end well. But England's story did go better, because as we all know, England recovered, England became the seat of the greatest empire the world has ever known, and England also founded the colonies that became the United States, the most prosperous and powerful nation the world has ever known. And so, in a way, it's a hopeful note, because if England could come back then, we can come back now. And we hope to see it, because I only wish the best for our cousins across the Atlantic. Now, just a quick note, I haven't abandoned my new hat, but I thought this was a little bit more of a somber theme, so it was a little bit too fanciful, a little bit too fun <laughs> to go with this topic. I do want to say Happy Victoria Day to everyone concerned, everyone who remembers Victoria and uh, thinks about the British Empire in a fond way. This is the Steampunk Desperado saying, God bless the United Kingdom.